This presentation will address the focus question, how are priority issues for Australia's health identified? And focusing on measuring health status and looking at measures of epidemiology, specifically infant mortality. And we'll use some tables and graphs to help uh, identify current trends in relation to infant mortality. So infant mortality can be defined as the number of infant deaths in the first year of life per 1,000 live births. You can see in this graph the infant mortality rate. Uh, the trend is a very steep decline since 1914 and you can see that it's up at a very high rate in 1914 and you can see that it's come down significantly uh, in 2014. So over time we can look back uh, and we can, we can say that there have been quite a few initiatives or measures that have been implemented to reduce the infant mortality rate over time and one of the important measures has been vaccination of children and you can see that from 1940 on the graph or thereabouts um, some important vaccinations were introduced. Uh, the diphtheria vaccination was introduced in the 1940s and you can see a bit of a, a, a significant drop uh, from there. Uh, similarly uh, in 1940s and 50s etc we had the uh, whooping cough vaccine implemented and then we also had the polio vaccine in the 1950s and 60s and we can see on the graph that there are sig some significant reductions in infant mortality around those times. We've also had plenty of um, health promotion and education and knowledge and medical technology that has also contributed to the improvement of health outcomes for infants and that has gradually over time reduced the amount of infants dying in the first year of life. For example, the education around sudden infant death syndrome or SIDS has been very effective in reducing the impact of that particular issue on infants, particularly in the last 20 years or so. Having a look at this table, you can see that the infant mortality rate has come down quite significantly in a, quite a short space of time. Between 2004 and 2014, you can see an incremental reduction in infant deaths per 1,000 live births, 4.7 in 2004, moving downward to 3.6 in 2013, and then in just one year, we've seen a reduction down to 3.4 infant deaths per 1,000 live births. So you can see that health outcomes for infants are improving over time. You can see in this graph here, the infant mortality rate for the indigenous population is compared to the non-indigenous population. You can see that there is a significant difference dating back to 1998, where the indigenous infant mortality rate is up around the 14 deaths per 1,000 live births compared with just over four deaths per 1,000 live births for the non-Indigenous population. That's a significant difference in the health outcomes for Indigenous infants. But we have seen a significant improvement and a narrowing of the gap as time has gone on over uh, the last decade. And you can see that in 2012, the Indigenous infant mortality rate is about approximately five infant deaths per 1,000 live births, and the Indigenous, the non-Indigenous infant mortality rate is three, around 3.3 infant deaths per 1,000 live births. Again, there has pro most probably been some very effective health promotion and improved or increased vaccination take up in Indigenous infants, uh, health promotion and education of parents and families about issues affecting infants such as sudden infant death syndrome, adequate nutrition and also improved medical technology that has also helped to improve survival rates for uh, infants 
that are born with various medical conditions. There is still a significant difference though between um, the infant mortality rate of indigenous and non-indigenous infants, but you can clearly see that that trend, that downward trend is very pleasing and shows that uh, the Close the Gap initiative has been quite successful in this area. Thank you very much for listening and please tune in to the next podcast.